Hello beautiful people. Today I wanted to do a quick demo on how I'm using Stable Diffusion to enhance my photos with AI. I wanted to show you the benefits of using something like this and how it unlocks your creativity. What you're seeing now on the screen is a picture I took of April at a shoot from a couple years back. The image on the left is the original and the image on the right was enhanced with stable diffusion. AI is a great way to come up with ideas and concepts and incorporate them into your photos. Let me show you how this is done. What you see on the screen now is a web UI that a lot of stable diffusion users are using because it gives you the full capabilities of stable diffusion. The beautiful thing about stable diffusion, it's open source. So that means it's absolutely free if you can install it on your computer locally. So I'm going to start with something simple. I'm going to take this photo of April and drop it in there. And the first thing I'm going to do is fill in this area called negative prompts. I have a list here that I keep on a Google document and I'm simply just going to paste that in there. And what this does, it limits the possibilities of having, you know, deformed hands and long necks and morbid results, which is very common with AI generation. So what we're doing is using a method called image to image where you have an image as a reference. And if you look here, it says in paint. And basically what this does is that you create a mask to replace certain things in the picture. What I'd like to do with this image is not change April here completely, but instead I want to put her in a garden with cherry blossom trees. So the next thing I'm going to do is just enter in here a garden with cherry blossom trees. I'm also going to put some supportive text like photorealistic, cinematic, that type of thing. And what we're doing here is filling in a prompt. It's a descriptive text so that the AI knows what it is you want. So I'm just going to keep it really simple, but typically I would add more to this. It's really not necessary for this demo. So I have a garden with cherry blossom trees, photorealistic, cinematic, diffuse lighting. Next, I'm going to mask her face and her hands and most likely the bench because those are things that I want to keep for the image and also because AI has a terrible time with hands and sometimes the face. So this is a good way around that. If you have a concept idea that involves a person, just get somebody to pose for it and mask out the hands so that you don't have to worry about it. I'm going to keep the majority of uh, the image here of April and I'm going to do this fairly quickly. You really should take your time in masking this. I'm going to mask the bench here. I want to keep the perspective and we may as well mask the rest of this area here. We could mask the whole body if we wanted to, but this is good enough for the demo. I'm going to run through the options here just to set it up. I'm going to set the mask blur to about 20 so that the transition from the new image to the original is smooth. We're going to click on in paint not mask. So that means anything that's not in black is going to be changed. We're going to click on in paint at full resolution. We'll keep the sampling steps fairly low to about 40. For sampling method, I like to use DPM2 Keras or however that's pronounced. And then the aspect ratio I'm going to change to 768 by 512. I'm going to render four images to C. CFG scale I'm going to put to 8.5. The denoising strength, I'll start with 0.4 just to keep the likeness of the image. And uh, for those of you that know about this stuff, that's pretty much how I start off. And by the way, I am using the F222 model because it does wonders on people. For those of you that might be interested in using it, just be weary that it can produce NSFW type of images. So be mindful of that. So all we have to do is click on generate and you're going to see a preview screen here. You see already that the leaves have changed to cherry blossom trees. So this is pretty fantastic for me where you have a concept, you want to put it in there and that's the output you get. Pretty cool, eh? So there we go. All our images are rendered. If we click on these, we're going to get some previews 
and uh, yeah, you see we have even like this boardwalk here that it's added along with the cherry blossom trees. We have some here as well. That's a nice touch. And as you see, the hands, the face, uh, everything's intact. Now, the clothes are a little bit wrinkled because, you know, we didn't really <laughs> pay attention to that, but that's fine. There's the second image, so slight variations if you see. But again, we have our cherry blossoms, the same boardwalk, but it starts here, which is great. Another variation where it looks like the tree is just above there. That's pretty cool. So to go back to our original prompt here, we put in cherry blossom trees. We achieved what we wanted to and fairly easily without having to Photoshop, right? So I'm going to go ahead and mask this and do all the settings. I'll speed it up in the video so you don't have to sit through it. Okay, so I've masked out the face, the hands, and the hat and the lower portion of the body. And we're going to change the scenery here. In the prompt area, I'm going to put in autumn garden with, you know, leaves in the background or something like that. Let's see what it comes up with. I also added a backlighting effect because I like that backlighting effect. That's how I shot it originally. Okay, it's done rendering. Now we have our backlit subject in an autumn garden. We do have leaves in the background. If we notice the next image here, you see that the outfit has changed slightly. Probably would have to do a bit of editing around the wrists here, but that's fine, no big deal. Slight difference in the outfit as well and the hairstyle. I really like this hairstyle on April. It looks great. And then another image here. So again, very slight changes that can really enhance your photography. Now, what if we wanted to completely change the environment? Maybe I want the background to be in the city instead. So I can change the prompt to a city background, right? So I'm simply just going to type in city in the background, photorealistic backlighting and click generate and right away you see the environment here is she's still backlit but we see buildings we see a person we still have some trees which is great but she's in a totally different environment and we could even do this for the weather we could make it a winter scenery if we wanted to maybe i'll do a quick run of that really quickly here are the rendered images Again, change in the outfit, still holding that hat and the hands look great. <laughs> change in the hairstyle. Here's the other image. There's the other one. And the last one. Just for fun, I haven't tried this. We're gonna put her in a winter scenery. Let's say like a snowy landscape. Let's put woman wearing Daedric armor. Skyrim fans, you'll know where that's coming from. I don't even know how this is going to work or how it's going to look. So we have a woman wearing Daedric armor, snowy landscape. Let's put in photo realistic. We're going to render this. There we go. Now it's starting to give her some armor. <laughs> that's really cool. And this is the fun of AI generated art. You know, if you can imagine it, you can create it. I've fallen down such a deep rabbit hole with this. Now that looks really cool. Now it does look funny because she's still holding the same hat. Let's look at the other ones here. We see this outfit. It's changed um, more than the outfit, if you know what I mean. Let's look at, ooh, this got kind of like a Batman look. Kind of cool. So it is adopting the prompt, and I think if I make this higher, it will be even more so. I'm just curious. I'm going to run this really quick just to see if it adopts more of the prompt. Oh yeah, there we go. That was the issue. So I put it to 0.7 for denoising. And again, the hat doesn't fit now, but now she's wearing some serious armor. That was really cool. So there we go. We have April in Daedric armor. Still looks really weird with her holding the hat, but you get my point. It was really, really fun to do here. And you see the snowy landscape. That's awesome. You can tell even with this result, you know, I probably wouldn't use this. I'd need some tweaking, but you get my point. Now quickly, I just want to show you straight up image to image where we use the image as a reference. Now this is really good for even images that didn't turn out so well. As long as the composition is the way you want or it has, you know, certain aspects of it that you want to use as reference. So I'm going to leave the same prompts in here with the Daedric armor, but you're going to see as we generate this, it's going to keep the likeness of the image in terms of composition, the surroundings and all that stuff. 
So as we see them render, you see that uh, it's keeping even the way the body's looking. It's adopting some of the colors. It's a bit more random because I brought up the denoising strength. As we look at the images here, they're not perfect. I just ran them really quick. But you see that it's keeping sort of the same composition as April, but it's changing a lot of the environment, right? Because we didn't really put so much of the prompt. But it's very useful if you want to even use existing images to create new digital art, fantasy art. You could even put into the prompts oil paintings, watercolor paintings, sculptures, whatever it is you want to do. That's also possible. Now, as always, let me know what you thought in the comments below. Do you see yourself using something like this? Eventually, I'm going to go deeper into this with you guys. But for now, I'll just leave some reference links in the description below if you want to go ahead and get started. As always, my friends, I appreciate you checking out the video. Make sure to hit the like button. It really does help my channel out. And until then, I'll see you when I see you.